Hey, I'm Stephanie, and it's time for some makeup comparisons. Today is all about under eye correctors, and it's part of my Panning for Gold series here on my channel, in which I pluck individual items from my makeup kit that have similar claims, and I pit them against each other in head-to-head -head comparisons over a period of time so that I can really get to know all their nuances. And the ultimate goal is for me to find the gold nuggets in my collection. Every time I strike gold, I report back in a video like this. But this quest for gold isn't just fun. It's also quite high stakes because I aim to declutter anything that isn't a gold nugget. As always, I'll leave timestamps so that you can simply hop, skip, and jump to whatever is most relevant for you. As a side note before we jump in, I just wanted to mention I'm feeling a little bit insecure about my hair. Within the context of this project, I am testing a bunch of hair products as well. And uh, I decided that in order to do that really thoroughly, I was going to need a baseline image. So what my hair looks like when there's absolutely no product in it at all. And so when I washed my hair, today I dried it without using any styling products and I feel like it's looking a little bit I don't know flat and sad <laughs> so I don't know the things we do for science but if you're interested in seeing the results of any of the testing that I'm doing then feel free to subscribe because I will be sharing everything once I've collected my thoughts um, and for now let's just jump right in with my teeny weeny weasel head itself color correctors as someone who has had hereditary dark circles their whole lives, color correcting is an integral part of my makeup routine. And as someone who is beginning to see the first signs of maturing skin, so the first fine lines, thinning skin under the eyes, the consistency of the formula is very important to me. So which color correctors will we be comparing today? My current favorite and the reigning champion to date is this, the Tarte Colored Clay CC Under Eye Corrector in the shade Light Medium. And it will be going up against this contender from Pixie by Petra, which is the Correction Concentrate in the shade Brightening Peach. A couple of differences between these two products are apparent at first glance. So let's begin by looking at these two in the pan. Color-wise, they're not only different because one is peach and one is pink, but the saturation or intensity of the color is also different. I would say the hue of both of these products is light, but the Tarte Corrector has a light, unsaturated peach tone, whereas the Pixie Corrector has a light, saturated pink tone. And these differences in color definitely have practical implications when applied under the eye for the purpose of correcting, but we'll get to that in a moment. The other difference between these two products that's pretty apparent when looking at them in the pan or upon initial swatching is their consistency. The Tarte formula is a creamier, more emollient one, whereas the one from Pixie is much stiffer. Both have their pros and cons. The more hydrating, creamier feeling of the Tarte product can feel a little bit kinder to dry, tired under eyes like mine often are. And it also offers more radiance. And radiance is often touted as the be all and end all of a concealer, bringing light to your under eyes. But radiance, it's kind of a double-edged sword, especially if you're like me and you have hollows under your eyes. Too much radiance does have the potential to emphasize those hollows. Or if you have a lot of texture under your eyes, you might not necessarily want a product with a lot of radiance because it could emphasize that texture. The radiance in this particular formula comes from the hydrating nature of the product and not from shimmer or glitter particles, as you might be familiar with if you've ever seen or used the Becca X Smashbox corrector because there's like little tiny shiny particles in that one. On the other hand, the stiffer, less emollient Pixie formula has a little bit more staying power, but a little bit less radiance. However, I wouldn't call it a matte finish. On my skin, once it's blended out, it has more of a satin finish. So to make a long story short, the Tarte Corrector has a more dewy finish, whereas the Pixie Corrector has a more satin finish. When it comes to application, the slightly thinner but stiffer Pixie formula is a little bit harder to blend, but I find when applied with a finger, the warmth from my body heat warms it up enough that it's very easy to simply tap in until it's blended out. And now that the weather is warmer, I find that I can also apply this with a brush. 
And the thin stiffness of this product comes with an added boon. Namely, it's a little bit more tenacious than the creamy tart formula. So that means that Although this does crease, it doesn't crease as badly as the tart, so I can get away with not setting this with a powder. So if I'm going for a no makeup makeup day and I just need things to be quick and easy, then this is usually a pretty good alternative. The Tarte formula, because it is creamier, it's a bit easier to blend, but of course that comes with the caveat that I usually do have to set this one with a powder if I don't want it to crease. Now, let's circle back and talk about the practical implications of the differences in color. So in other words, the light, less intense peach color of the Tarte corrector versus the light but very saturated color of the Pixi corrector. The color of the Tarte product has a brightening effect on my particular skin tone because the hue of the peach is quite light. And I appreciate the fact that it brightens my under eyes because I do have those hollows under there and that kind of helps to conceal them a bit. But the peach in here is peachy enough that it does work towards correcting the dark under eye circles that I have. The Pixie Corrector, I think this color just works very differently. First of all, because the hue is a little bit darker and the color is more intense, this doesn't add any brightness to my under eyes. However, I do feel that this particular color and the saturation of it does a better job at actually combating the color of my dark under eye circles. So if I want a brightening effect, I have to use the Tarte. However, if I want kind of a more natural look where there's no brightening, the Pixie is a good choice. So what's the verdict? Well, obviously as the undefeated champion, the Tarte CC under eye corrector definitely has the title of gold nugget already, but the Pixie corrector has now definitely earned a spot in my makeup kit and thus also the title of official gold nugget. So why do I feel like keeping both of these is worth it? The answer is because I use both of them in completely different contexts. If I'm doing a lot of traveling or my work schedule is particularly hectic, I often lose a little bit of control over things like my sleep regimen, how much water I'm drinking, and how consistent I am with my skincare. And that usually ends up translating directly to my under eyes in the form of tired looking, drier, darker skin under my eyes. And in those cases, in that context, the Tarte corrector is a great tool because its emollients really kind of helps rejuvenate that area. And its brightening effect is particularly useful when I'm wearing a full face of makeup because then it really helps me sculpt my face. But that brightening effect can be a bit much, especially if I'm having a day where I'm not planning on wearing a whole lot of foundation. So if I'm going for more of a no makeup makeup look, that's when the Pixie Color Corrector comes in really handy, especially since I was testing this while I happened to be using up this particular sunscreen. This is the Super Goop Bright Eyed 100% Mineral eye cream and uh, it's SPF 40 for the under eyes. I realize it is very extra to have a sunscreen that's specifically for the under eyes and to be fair, this would work all over the face, but I got sucked into the marketing. As someone who has chronically dark under eyes and spends a lot of time at the lake, some days I just don't wear makeup to the lake, but I still don't want to look like I was punched in the face. And so I was kind of hoping that this would be the perfect solution and it turns out it's not. <laughs> this doesn't add any color correction. It does have a slightly peachy tone to it, but it's pretty useless because it shears out. And in the end, this just leaves a super mega ultra radiant finish. And for someone with hollows under their eyes, that is just not ideal. But I find that I can tamp down that mega shine with this product. And so this has actually been a match made in heaven. So both of these are gold nugget worthy for me and they'll both remain in my collection. The question now becomes, what will I be rolling in to test next? Well, depending on the order in which my videos go up, this might be a spoiler, but normally for this project, I only roll in products to test that I already own because my goal for this year is to really curate my collection, not bring a whole lot of new things in. But I did decide to make an exception in this case. Basically, 
under eyes are like my thing this year. That's like my number one goal is to optimize the way my under eyes look. And so um, I ended up purchasing this one from Charlotte Tilbury. And the reason, my inspiration behind it was actually Too Much Tash here on YouTube. She did an amazing color correction comparison video. And the way she described this one sounded like it was exactly what I was looking for. Almost like it's the sweet spot between these two. And so I just thought it was worth a try. So I will be testing this Charlotte Tilbury color corrector against these two gold nuggets. But wait, there's more. If you've been watching my channel for a while, you already know that one of the reasons that my makeup collection kind of swelled to the amount that it has is because all of my family, friends, and colleagues know how much I absolutely love playing with makeup. So anytime they have something to declutter, they just send it my way, and it's great. Um, but I have come to realize that I can't just accept the makeup. I have to audition it to see if it's worthy of my collection. So over the past several months, I've just been kind of collecting those pieces in a little box over to the side and it hasn't been getting much attention simply because I've been testing my own collection that's already been established but now this box is starting to get to the point where it might overflow soon and so I needed to start testing those things and as I was rummaging through I found some color correctors, two of which were from the same brand. So I thought this would be a particularly interesting test. They're both from Milani. This one is the brightening under eye tint, and this one is the under eye brightener. So my question is, same juice, different packaging, or completely different formulas? We could go either way, but that's why I'm doing these tests. So if you're interested in hearing the results of this test or any of the other makeup comparisons I'm doing, then I hope you'll subscribe. If you happen to have any experience with any of the products I talked about today, I would love to hear what your experiences were. And also, if you have any predictions, how do you think these battles are going to go? Let me know in the comments. But even if you don't, say hi in the comments. I do hope you have a great week and that we can all remember that even stumbling can be a form of moving forward. So let's stumble in style. <laughs>